This is the answer to uh, homework problem. Uh, let's see, what, what homework problem was it? Oh, I don't see the thing right off the bat, so we'll just do it. Uh, it's asking for the power supply rejection ratio, and I made the mistake of not specifying whether it's passive load or active load and how it's biased. So um, let's do let's do the passive load first. So so the power supply rejection ratio is the gain you want, which is ADM over the gain you don't want, which is the gain from supply to output. So we have the ADM, but we need this gain from the supply to output. So how you find that is you take your circuit, take your circuit, and you set V in plus equal to V in minus. So these essentially become the same voltage. We'll just call it VI. And that should be <clears throat> a legal voltage that sets it in the um, that autom it'll automatically set it in uh, the amplification region if it's big enough to keep all your transistors in the forward active region. Okay, so you have that. And now what you do is instead of putting a solid VCC up here or VDD in the case of a MOSFET based um, diff pair, is you do that and then you add just a little signal, call it V noise. And instead of having VDD up here, you put the noise onto both of those and now this node right here is moving a little bit okay so the uh, again um, you vn both of the vns are set equal to each other um, equal to vn i guess i should have looked at plus and minus okay and then so you know that you have the current through each of these is i s s over two I S S over two, and those are um, that since these two inputs are the same, these two currents will always be the same. Assuming again that this is I S S. Okay, so now if this supply voltage up here, we'll call this VCC um, P for this primary. And this is VCC with noise. Okay, so when VCC with noise happens, there's still, it's not going to change the current through here. ISS, since VI plus and VI minus are equal to each other, ISS is going to split between the two branches. So you're always going to have ISS over 2 here. And if you think about the equation for V out, and this is true on both sides, it's your VCC minus ISS over 2 times your R. These two R's are the same. So when VCC uh, moves, well, ISS isn't changing, R isn't changing. So when VCC moves, that's exactly how much V out changes, um, both of them. Okay. Tricky part is, and this was <clears throat> in the hint there, that um, because this is differential, the actual uh, the actual VID, the sorry, VOD. Um, is the difference of V out plus minus V out minus and see what happens. So when there's a little bit of noise on the supply, you have V out plus plus V in. And V O D is the difference between V out minus also going to be plus Vn because uh, when Vcc moves again with a constant current you have a constant voltage drop across the resistor so when Vcc moves V out plus and V out minus move the same amount that's this noise amount right here those cancel out and you get 
the same result as if you didn't have that noise. So actually, the gain from, with the passive load, the gain from uh, the power supply rejection ratio from the supply or passive load going back up here, your ADM is your GM or minus GM, depending on which side you take as which output, all over zero, which equals infinity. And again, for any of these rejection ratio metrics, you want um, them to be large, and zero, uh, infinite is pretty large. So that's the passive load version. So next, looking at uh, diff pair with uh, active load, but let's say that V bias comes from some place where there's no noise. Okay, so V bias is constant, but VCC is moving a little bit. Uh, same definition, you've got the gain that you want over the gain you don't want. And the gain you don't want is how much noise on the supply gets amplified and shows up on V out. So if you look at this circuit, if VI plus equals VI minus, you still have ISS over 2. Um, and what happens here is that uh, V bias is constant and the emitter of these two top PNPs, um, that emitter is moving. So actually what has is happening here is that these VBEs are changing by the same amount of, uh, by the same amount as uh, the amount of noise on the supply. So if the base is constant and the emitter is moving, you're getting constant changes in VBE here. And when VBE changes, that should change the current. But because VI plus and VI minus equal each other, you have to have ISS over 2 going through both sides. So if VBE changes, then something has to readjust the current back to ISS over 2. And the only way... The only thing that can do that is your VCE. So what happens is that the VCE on both sides here has to constantly be um, doing the opposite of whatever the VBE is. So if VCC has a little bit of noise that moves VCC up, that just increased VBE. So it's going to try to conduct more current. So VCE tries to turn it down, and this node goes up to drop VCE. Um, same thing happens if, v, if the VCC drops a little bit. That just turns down VBE, but it still needs to conduct ISS over 2. So VCE has to get bigger. In other words, V out plus has to go down um, to accommodate that extra current. So the, uh, But that difference is also happening to both sides. So when VBE gets smaller here, the VCE gets bigger on both of these. So again, that, that shows up as common mode noise. In other words, both sides move in the same direction. So just like we saw in the previous, the previous example, you get something like this. And you should get your original difference back. But there is a, a difference here. Uh, with What happens is that when this VCE changes a lot, it changes the VCE on your input transistors also. And you, um, you get um, uh, some base width modulation, uh, sometimes uh, so if this turns it down here, this VBE has to turn up. Let's go this step by step, actually. That would be better. So let's do step by step here. Uh, another touchy-feely. So one is that the collector of input transistors moves. And that makes... The VBE of input transistors move to counteract the fact that their VCE is changing. So now the VBE moves, but V in plus and V in minus are 
are equal. So when the VBE moves, what happened is, is the node, let's call it VN, what happens here is VN moves base with modulation happens to tail current source. What's happening here? What happened to four? Oh, happens to tail current source. Let's see if it, oh, it's not going to fit. Oh no, what happened? I've lost my text. Oh, don't you love technology? Um, so what was there? It was a good thing. Let's see, vi, vi plus equals vi minus. Okay, so I think this one was um, VBE of input transistors move. Base width modulation happens to the tail current source, and ISS actually changes. So, um, six ISS changes due to base width modulation, and now um, ISS over two is different. And your your V outs respond differently. So there's there's a bunch of stuff. That, that goes on that gives you not quite a zero for the active load. It's that all that channel length modulation and, uh, sorry, base width modulation, channel length modulation if this was built with MOSFETs. Uh, but this node moving changes ISS, which changes some things going around. Here. They're equal on both sides and subtract out, but um, it, it, doesn't happen exactly like that. I'm not satisfied now Now that I've done this description. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'll try to add something to that a little bit later, but I uh, need to um, move on with the day. I'll come back to this, but it is a uh, base width modulation that makes this not quite zero.